Look around you. The world's most successful companies are leveraging one secret technique and you probably haven't even noticed. It's over 120 years old and it came from Italy, but today it's still hiding in plain sight, influencing everything. From the shows you binge watch on Netflix to the sneakers you buy from Nike, this technique is the key to their success. And it's about to become your ticket to mastering cloud computing. Hi, I'm Soleiman. I'm a cloud engineer and I run my own cloud security consultancy. If you're looking to progress your career in the cloud, it's easy to feel lost and not know what to tackle next. With the countless services, tools, and concepts to learn, you end up so overwhelmed to the point of not doing anything at all. That's what we call decision paralysis. But today, we're going to fix that because once you understand this Italian technique, you'll never look at learning cloud skills the same way again. I know this will work for you because hundreds of students inside of my Cloud Engineer Academy are leveraging this technique to gain an unfair advantage. And by the way, you can get my beginner's guide to the cloud and my top 10 LinkedIn tips for free. Just go through the checkout link in the description. Right, so what is this technique? Well, it's called the Pareto principle and it was developed by an Italian economist, Vilfredo Pareto in 1896. In short, Pareto observed that 80% of the land in Italy was owned by only 20% of the population. He also witnessed this happening with plants in his garden. 20% of his plants were bearing 80% of the fruit. And more than 120 years later, this exact principle still applies today. Don't believe me? Well, let's take Netflix for an example. While they have thousands of shows and movies in their catalog, they don't promote them all equally. Netflix understand that roughly 20% of their content inspires 80% of their views. This drives their marketing strategy, so they focus their efforts on promoting a small number of shows. Think of Stranger Things, You, Money Heist. These are shows you've seen plastered across billboards, featured on social media, and highlighted on the Netflix homepage. Another quick example I'll give you is Nike. Think about how many athletes they've got and then consider who are they actually marketing. Their budget is focused on marketing Ronaldo, LeBron James, Serena Williams, because they are the small number of all Nike athletes that drive the majority of the sales. You see how this is the same technique. And the good news is that I'm going to show you how you apply the Pareto principle to your own cloud journey. It's actually a three-step process and the first First thing you need to learn are four essential cloud concepts. Number one, virtual machines. For you beginners out there, think of virtual machines as renting a computer that lives on the internet. You can use this virtual computer to run your programs or host your websites without maintaining or worrying about the physical hardware. Now in AWS, you'll know that EC2 is the heart of AWS's compute capabilities, offering a wide range of virtual servers called instances that can be scaled up or down based on your needs. Next, we have object storage, and for AWS, it's S3. Now imagine object storage as a giant unlimited USB drive in the cloud where you can store all of your files, and it never runs out of space. As you learn more, you'll realize that object storage is a service that provides scalability, data availability, security, and performance. You'll work with concepts called buckets. Think of these as folders, and objects, think of these as files, and then you learn how to control who can access your data in the object storage. Moving on to identity and access management. This is another key essential part of the cloud. This is like having a strict but fair security guard for your cloud resources. Identity and access management ensures only the right people can access your files and your programs. Last but not least, we have networking and specifically VPCs for AWS, which stands for Virtual Private Cloud. If you're starting out, imagine VPC as your own private playground in the cloud where you can set up your virtual computers and decide who gets to play. As you advance, you'll learn that VPCs provides a logical isolated section of the AWS cloud where you can 
launch resources in a virtual network that you define. It involves concepts like subnets, root tables, security groups, and network ACLs, all of which help create a secure and isolated network environment. Now, let me introduce you to something that perfectly embodies this 80-20 principle that we have been discussing. It's called OxyCopilot, the AI-powered copilot for scalable web scraping. OxyCopilot is the first AI-powered assistant specifically designed to handle diverse website structures and meet your data collection needs without any manual coding. It's like having a brilliant coder by your side, but one that works at the speed of AI. And here is why it's a game changer for cloud professionals. Firstly, it generates code for scraping requests and passing instructions automatically. Next, Excel's identifying complex passing patterns using advanced LLMs, and you can access it through the Scraper API Playground, input your prompt, and receive ready-to-use code for your projects in seconds. Now, in the world of cloud computing and data analysis, gathering data is often a crucial but time-consuming task. OxyCopilot transforms this process, allowing you to focus on the analysis and the insights, the 20% of the work that yields 80% of the results. Check out the link in the description and thanks to Oxylabs for sponsoring today's video. Now that we've covered the essential concepts, the second step is learning four high impact services to take your cloud skills to the next level. First up, we have AWS Lambda, which you can think of as a magic wand that runs your code automatically when something specific happens without you needing to manage any computers. As you advance, you'll learn that Lambda is a serverless compute service that runs your code in response to events and automatically manages the underlying computing resources. Next up, API Gateway. Imagine this as a receptionist for your cloud applications, helping different parts of your program talk to each other and to other programs on the internet. As you dive deeper, you'll realize it's a fully managed service for creating, publishing, and managing APIs at scale, which is crucial for building modern and decoupled applications. Moving on to DynamoDB, which you can pick as a super fast digital filing cabinet that can handle lots of information at once. More technically, DynoDB is a fully managed NoSQL database service that provides fast and predictable performance with seamless scalability. Lastly, we have Bedrock, which is like having a super smart robot helper that can understand and create human-like text images just like ChatGPT. In a world of advanced cloud computing, Bedrock is AWS's fully managed service for building generative AI applications, providing access to foundation models from leading AI companies and of course, Amazon. And that brings us to the third step, which is by far the most important. But don't forget, you can't skip the previous two steps and jump straight here. You need to build hands-on portfolio projects. And there is four that I recommend. The first one is creating a serverless web application. This means building a simple website that doesn't need its own computer to run. You can implement this web application using Lambda, API Gateway, and DynamoDB, and deploy it to AWS. Next, we'll create an automated backup solution. You can think of this as a system that automatically saves copies of your important files every day to S3, which is the object storage. You'll need to develop this system using EC2, S3, and Lambda, and ensuring it's properly secured within your VPC. Our third project is a secure file sharing system. For those just starting out, this involves making a safe place where you and your friends can share files, ensuring only the right people can see them. The project uses S3, Lambda, Identity Access Management, and VPC, focusing on access control and network isolation. Finally, we'll build an AI-powered content generator. Here, you will create a program that can write stories or create pictures based on prompts using Bedrock's AI capabilities. And as you advance, you'll develop this content generation application using Bedrock, Lambda, and API Gateway leveraging pre-trained AI models for text or image generation based on user inputs. Now then, if you're like me, you're always questioning why. Why should I listen to you, Soleiman? And why this 80-20 approach? And you know what? They are valid questions. So let me explain. Using my plan, you'll avoid the common pitfall of trying to learn everything at once, which in turn means you'll end up learning nothing. Remember, 
AWS offers hundreds of services and trying to master them all is not only impractical, but also unnecessary for most roles. By using the 80-20 rule, you're accelerating your learning curve because you're focusing on the key concepts and services that give you the most bang for your buck. And then you applying the learning by building projects that will make up your portfolio. You need this practical hands-on approach to get hired, especially if you're new to the cloud and if you don't have any previous IT experience. Remember, I quit my job and gave myself three months to land a new cloud role. And that's why I'm giving it to you because it works. That said, if you still don't know how or where to start, then consider joining my Cloud Engineer Academy. I'll take you from someone with no IT experience to job ready cloud engineer in just 12 weeks. And if you don't believe me, go check out Jay's story who went from banking to cloud hired in less than six months. And it's also perfect if you're already in tech, but you want to make the move to the cloud or just generally upskill in the cloud. Link in the description. Now, there is one issue with the 80-20 approach, but it's easily fixable. And here is why. You see, the cloud landscape is always evolving. New services and best practices emerge often, which means what I taught you today, in 12 months, there might be a better way of doing things. And part of being a successful cloud engineer is staying up to date with these changes. So that means being active in online communities, staying up to date with the announcements that AWS make and seeing what thought leaders are saying on LinkedIn and YouTube. And just be completely immersed in this space and you'll be just fine to adapt. And honestly, I think that's where the beauty of this approach comes through. You have almost definitely heard of someone say to you, give a man a fish and you'll feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you'll feed him a lifetime. Right now, I'm teaching you how to fish so you can learn and apply this forever. Think about it. On your cloud computing journey, if you decide to specialize in cloud security later on, just like I have, you can identify the 20% of security concepts and services that will give you 80% of the results. And that's how you need to think because adopting the 80-20% rule isn't just about learning skills. It's about developing a mindset. It's about constantly asking yourself, what are the most impactful actions that I can take? What not knowledge will yield the greatest results. When I started working out and going to the gym, I sat down and figured out what were the 20% of exercises that I can do that yield 80% of the results that I'm after. So that was bench press, squats, deadlifts. The 80-20% rule is a lens through which you can view entire life and development from. It's about working smarter. It's about making strategic choices about where to invest your time and energy. But then after you make your choice, get your head down and work. There is no shortcuts and no Jerome Powell isn't going to hand you a stimulus check in 2024. But if you want the shortcut to a cloud career path that no one is talking about, but they should be, then click here to watch this video because it's the same path that I took to quit my job.